Ah, bright light. Hello. Um, so I'm going to repeat some of what he said, but in English because I don't know what he said. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, um, uh, and, and, and mostly just to give you context for this talk, because this is a little, this, uh, as opposed to my colleagues, this is a little bit more philosophical than it is technical. Um, and it, it comes from the, the perspective of, uh, you know, I've been a, a professional writer for, for about 20 some years now, but I've also had a parallel career in video games. And, um, and so the issue of storytelling in video games or story in games has been actually sort of a hot button for, for, for a long time. And I wanted to just give you the perspective that I've been doing both for, for a long time. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this talk here. Yes, please. So, so let's start with uh, where we were. Um, you know, I, I want to get out with the old because um, the the uh, you know the, early on, particularly the whenever I said you know some any, mentioned anything about story and video games, this is what I got. Like this reaction of oh, you know, story is stupid; it gets in the way. Those movies suck. And guess what they do because you want them to suck because you don't like them. And they're also not well integrated into the experience. And I want to get outside of the story versus games because I don't think you can have this argument anymore. Um, uh, because the, the, way, the way games are going with the new platforms, even, even with mobile, you, you, you can't avoid uh, the elements of storytelling, even in the 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 most light, you know, uh, disposable mobile experience. Also, also, um, uh, there's the 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 there's been a, a lot of great conversation lately, in uh, particularly from uh, David Cage from Quantic Dream uh, from the from the 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 uh, Gamescom conference about how meaning is the next wave of video games. And I believe this because um, games, I think, are not just games. I think interactivity is not just, doesn't just need to lead to games. I, I believe in interactivity and even games as a communication medium, the way film and television uh, communicate. They entertain, they communicate, they, they tell stories. They can be completely puerile and mindless uh, or they can be you know, very high-minded, but but it's communication, it's, it's people communicating ideas. Even the, st like I'm a horror fan, and the stupidest horror movies have, you know, underlying themes and all these classic, um, you know, uh, elements and concepts that, that bring people to the table. And so I think, I think interactivity has, is, ha is, is going this way. And, and these are the people that are really starting, I think, that are really starting to, to lead the way. Now, these are specifically storytelling video games, but they're also, they're also um, uh, new uses of the form to, to you know, do more than crush candy. And by the way, I love candy crush. Um, so let's go, go to the next, please. So, so and, the, and, and the, the real question, you know, the, the, the question I always ask is why? Like, why? And, and in this case, who cares uh, about storytelling or, or storytelling elements? And these days, everybody does because, I love this part, because here's the thing, is, is look, I, I understand, because of interactivity, the, the act of interacting, the, the mechanic itself, that's what differentiates you know, an interactive experience from a linear experience. You, it, it requires your input. It, it has to be interesting. It has to be tactile. It has to be engaging on that level. But here's the thing. We're not in Pongsis anymore. If it was really only still about that and only that, then this would be all of our, all of our experiences. But, um, you know, but we've moved beyond that because the, especially the new platforms that you know, one of the big pushes for, for this, this next gen from console standpoint is they're pushing higher and higher, 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 higher end graphics, multiplayer, um, you know, interactions, social interactions. And, and you need, you know, those things are built to create worlds. They're cr built to express ideas. They're built to express characters. Um, and so you have to sort of, again, get back from the story verses and realize that story itself uh, and elements of story are, are just another tool set. And so you don't, you, we don't have to fight, a, we don't have to fight anymore. We really don't. 
Um, so, so the platforms need it. They need story and character to justify you spending all this money on all this high-end tech that expresses all of these, these worlds and characters. Um, the publishers need it because they need marketing hooks. They need, they need ways to differentiate themselves from other people. So, you know, uh, um, Rockstar and, uh, is a really good example because their, their big thing is open worlds. So it's, you know, it's uh, Red Dead Redemption, it's Grand Theft Auto, and if you don't have an extensive amount of world creation, you know, planning, I, the worst thing in the world is a poorly, poorly populated open world because they're boring as hell. And so, so these guys need story, character, worlds, rules, everything to fill out and actually make a world real to the audience. Uh, and, and then developers need it because, because it, it gives them new tools for new experiences. And this is where things like Heavy Rain and, 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 and Walking Dead for, for Telltale, this is where these things come in. Also, you have touchscreen devices which give you another level of, of interactivity with worlds because it's not just the world is over there and you've got this little sort of remote control on this world, but you're actually now touching the world, you're in the world. And, and so I, it, it's, it becomes then more important to be able to connect with that, with that world almost literally. And then especially for the audiences, because the audiences are broadening. The devices, particularly mobile, have, have broadened the audience for games. Um, it's not just, you know, boys shooting, you know, uh, people in, in Call of Duty. It's Heavy Rain. It's, it's Angry Birds. And, you know, Angry Birds is a great story, and it's one sentence. The pigs took our babies. That's it. That's the story. But you know what? You know, that's, that's exactly what you need for that game. Um, and it becomes then a thing. It becomes a world, becomes a motivation. It has characters. That's storytelling. So, so, then, so then let's look at the elements of story in terms of um, basically best use, because that's, that's really what it's about. It's the, the problem with, in my view, the, the problem with earlier, earlier attempts at storytelling in video games where you really hated you know, the, the cutscenes and you, know, you really wanted to skip through them until, until Uncharted came along and made it a seamless experience is because they were viewed so negatively at, in terms of the production process. And the writing happened way over there compared to where the game was happening. Like, I, I, did, I did the script for, um, for, what was that game? Spy Hunter 2. So Spy Hunter 2, the game was 75% complete, and then they hire a writer to come in and write the dialogue. Whereas a writer could have helped make some of the things that they actually built um, more sensible, like the end of the movie, the end of the game was about, uh, spoiler alert, by the way, was, was a, but basically, the villain was going to melt the polar ice cap with this thing that looked like a giant mini fridge with little little jets of antifreeze. That's the stupidest thing in the world. It's so cliche, but the programmer came up with it. Love programmers, by the way. Um, um, but um, the, the whole idea is there wasn't a partnership that would have made the whole experience one experience. There was the game experience. And then I was okay, we have to have this movie thing. So they had a whole game basically with no hero and no villain until I came in. I'm like, well, then why are people playing? There's no hero and there's no villain. And you've got this hot chick who always needs to be rescued. And I'm like, well, she's an agent. Why is this? And so I rewrote the whole thing. And you know, we did what we did, but it was a separate process. And so if you think of it as part of your tool set for game design and for experience design, well, there's no reason not to do all of this all at once. So um, first, is, first is character. Um, because that's your audience perspective. That's your that's your entry point into it. Whether it's um, whether it's Spider-Man, which is um, pretty much uh, sort of the epitome of of the intersection between character and game design, because Spider-Man is a mechanic, um, and any superhero is a mechanic. Um, but it also gives the gives the, the the player you know the perspective on the whole experience. And so that goes from, like I say, from Spider-Man to, to something like uh, the birds and Angry Birds that if you think about it, well, if, the bir if they're birds, 
well, they can fly, then why do we need this catapult? Well, it doesn't matter because the mechanic is so cool. And also you get the story and you get the setting and the, it all comes together. Um, so, so yeah, uh, um, you know, the whole point of setting, and this, again, is a parallel in both, in both games and in, in just linear entertainment, it sets up the rules for engagement. You know, it, it, if you're in a fantasy world, well, then you can use magic. If you're, you know, if you're in Brooklyn, you can use knives. Um, you, there, there. It, and if you're, if you're in a fish tank with uh, this weird fish with, you know, a human face, then you know you have to worry about things like the the temperature of the, of the water, how clean it is, how the thing gets fed, and so, so as an element, setting is is excellent because it also drives then the next point, which is then art style. Because art, art, again, it's it's an expression of all these things. You can express your character, you express your 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 um, uh, your settings, and it gives you an attitude. It's like I put uh, Phoenix uh, uh, Phoenix Wright, which is another one of my favorite games, but just it's not the most hardcore expression of anime. But you know, Japanese anime has a very particular attitude and style to it. That, that, that is both seen in still and in animation in particular, where, uh, you know, that's different from, say, um, say Uncharted, which is very classic, cinematic, movie-like, you know, in an American style. And that addresses, you know, they address different audiences, they address different moods and, um, and attitudes. And um, and that's you know the, one of the one of the most important things in, in film is is who's your who's your um, you know who's your set designer who's who's doing the, the art direction who's who's doing the storyboards for it because it's not again it's just not about the words it's not about the story it's about you know the angles and it's about the lighting and it's about all these things that convey story without it necessarily being dialogue or words. And then there's and then there's plot. In games, I would say, plot, as it re pertains to um, <laughs> oh, I see. We've got feedback. I do have a theater background. I can speak to the last row. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll tr we'll try. Th we'll we'll keep going with this unless this is too annoying. Um, but um, where was I? Oh yes. Okay, plot. All right, I would say in terms of, uh, as an analog, that plot is the least relevant thing. What? Oh, oh, I, I apologize. I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I, I've gotten actually used to working with, um, with the headset mics, like, like a TED Talk kind of thing. And normally I'm like, ah, you know, I'm like very Italian. And this is very, like, I've got this cord. And I'm like, hello, this is my talk. I hope you like it. Um, um, but anyways, but, but make, make, like to me, the mechanics of a game are the plot because they're the, they're the moments. They're the things that get you from point A to point B to point C. So, you know, your, your jump in Mario, your double jump, your triple jump, that's the plot because that's what advances your game story and gets you to the next node of, of what the world is, of, what's, of what the overall experience is. Um, and so... This is why this is why I say, you know, not to be afraid of games, especially when you break uh, story and games, because when you break it down and use the you, and use the elements as design elements, then you decide what's the right proportion of all these things. And so, and that's why I keep going back to to Angry Birds because I think it's like for for what it is, it's it's almost perfect because it's not particularly logical. But it's very specific and it's very understandable. They, they, they just the, the plot is we got to get our you know we have to get we have to get the babies back, and then and then you never do, but you keep playing anyway because the mechanic, which is the game plot, keeps you with it the whole time. It keeps you playing, i.e., reading. And then there's mechanics themselves. So and this is this is. Uh, this is the loop um, where, it, uh, it, where it all feeds back because, like I said, the initially, um, uh, initially, I, you know, I talked about Spider-Man being, being a mechanic. Um, this is from um, Maximo. 
Um, and this to me sort of does everything all at once because you've got the character and you've got the character's mechanics and then you've got it's his health is his clothes so you've got you've got style you've got the mechanics built into you know his 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 actual being um, and uh, you know the story this the, the, the story is about him you know it's a pretty simple straightforward story of, of you know rescuing people and and but it, it sort of integrates everything all at once and then loops back where you can see it's got the goals, it's got the setting, it's got the art style, and the, the plot is, um, the plot is, you know, your, your swashbuckly plot. Um, the way the story has expressed itself in games. So, um, please. Ah, uh, yes. So, so in, in, in a traditional sense, Call of Duty is a really good example where the player is the pr protagonist. It's first person, you're the, you're the hero. And that, that takes away a lot, of the, a lot of the character aspect, at least about you, because you're you. You don't want to give people you know, too much distraction from themselves inside these games. It's all about them. The focus then becomes on the world around them and you immersed in this world. Um, and then what they do is, you know, in order to, to proliferate the, the, the line of, of Call of Duty games so that they can make a zillion of them and make you pay for a zillion of them, is they, they start tweaking, you know, the time, uh, you know, the time frame of the games, whether it's World War II or Modern Warfare or the future. Um, and they create different experiences that, that extend the, the, the universe of the game and also start to appeal to, uh, you know, different audiences or keep people interested who've already played the last five. Because if you look at what happened with, um, with uh, uh, Medal of Honor, you know, it sort of got stuck in one place and people got bored. And, and this is how they keep, they keep something like this fresh is they keep mixing in new elements of the, of the setting of the story so that they, they can extend it. So then in other games, like Prototype, uh, it's like, uh, I was going to use Spider-Man, and then I realized that I'm getting tired of my Spider-Man reference. Um, uh, and so I, so I moved to Prototype, where, again, the, the, the game, the primary game mechanic is the character itself, and how, it's par how, how the character's powers develop. And that is, it's, 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 also, it's also crucial to how the, what the story really is about, ultimately. And that's your driver for the entire experience is finding out, I'm sorry, uh, uh, you know, finding out why this character is like this. So, but it's still a very traditional game format with, with, with you know, with your cutscenes. But because of the way they've done it and the, the attention that they've paid to it, it flows not, not, quite as, not quite as seamlessly as something like Uncharted, but, you know, you, 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 there's, a, there's a respect for the whole experience and not just the game parts. And then, and then you get it, and, 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 and here's, uh, this is the funny thing, is in, in uh, RPGs, story is inherent to the whole thing. It's all about uh, world exploration and tons of reading, and Dragon Age actually kick, kicked my butt because um, there was probably enough, enough text um, with thing, the scrolls and things that you would find to just fill like 10 novels. Um, and at some point, that's where I go, oh, I want to just play a game. I don't want to read all this stuff. Um, but but the, the idea of, of clearly defined characters, a very well-defined um, world, the rules of that world, all, all contribute to the design itself and make the game what it is and then make the experience what people expect out of it. And then there's and then there's Monkey Island um, and the, the the old point and clicks. I went for I went for the old school mon Monkey Island, and um, and and again it's it's about story building and the, your whole your whole goal in getting through it is to fill out the story and tell a story. There's some graphics, but you know in these cases there's a lot of words, you know. And what I you know like a dope because I am a dope. Uh, what I forgot to uh, include in this presentation is the ultimate in, you know, text-based storytelling is, is the Zork series from way back when, where it, was, it wasn't even graphics, it was just text adventures. And so, um, 
you know, but again, in that case, especially when text was the only thing you were seeing, clearly the story was the motivation for the game design because uh, that's what kept you going. Um, so now, now we're in the mobile world where we don't have time to sit for 10 hours, uh, you know, and play something like Dragon Age. But this is actually a really cool medium for the development of sort of what I would think is, is your next gen of, of, of story-based or, or, or best use of, of story elements within uh, game design. Um, so I've, as I've mentioned 300 million thousand times already, um, Angry Birds is great because it's got a straightforward goal that is the goal, is the story, is the characters. It's all in one line. Um, and what's common and, and great is the unachievability of that goal. Um, something like, like I'm, I'm a huge Smurfs addict, so I've been playing Smurfs Village for three years. Well, you know, if it were a console game, I'd put in my, 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 my 20 hours and I'd be done and I'd wait for the sequel to come out. Instead, I've been playing one game for three years because it doesn't have what it is. It's a, it's a bunch of short stories from a, you know, from a story standpoint. It's a bunch of short stories. Oh, I'm probably in the way again. Um, that just continues. You're just living in a world, and you're, you're, you get a story here and there, and your little tap mechanics. Um, but the whole point is it doesn't end. And then there's this really this other cool thing that you can do that, that I don't think is done enough. And yes, I'm a, I've worked on this, so I'm a little, little, little prejudiced and, and, and prideful. Um, but is is the concept behind the Hunger Games Adventures, and um, it's on mobile now, but it started on Facebook. With the whole idea being that they took what was a very fixed story of Hunger Games, because it's a it's a novel. You know what happens at the end of, of all the novels if you read it. Doesn't change. But they did a brilliant thing, and a necessary thing if you're going to adapt something for long term is they, they use the game to fill in the story around the story. So you get, it's not quite a prequel because it weaves in and out of what happens in the, uh, in the movies or the, the books, but you get to actually live in the world that you've learned a part of uh, by reading the book, but you also get to get to know the characters that maybe got one scene in the, uh, you know, one scene in the movie or, you know, a paragraph in the novel you actually get to hang out and, get, and realize really more fully what that world was like that then created, you know, this, you know, this very efficient, you know, 150-page book that, that is one of the most popular things in the world. So, um, and this is, to me, this is more truly episodic than even what, what, what they did with Walking Dead because it's, and, and it's, it, because it truly is the big, just story chunks within a world. And you just come back, you play, you, you, you play through a, a story arc, and then you're on to the next story arc, and you can have parallel story arcs. Um, so again, you don't have an ending. You know your basic structure for it because you know that there's a book and there's a movie and you've seen all of that, but you're, you're, you're weaving in between the stuff that you already know and finding, more, finding out more information. Um, and then there's, then there's uh, uh, you know, games like this, which which is really about the character and setting. And, and to, me, to me, the, the play on this is like, uh, it's like a Lego set or, or, you know, if you've got action figures and, you know, I, it, normally all of these things are, you know, like Clash of Clans and all this are one, you know, one IP. But, you know, I imagine myself as a kid with, you know, a SpongeBob doll and a Captain America doll. And like, ah, Captain America, I will, I will get you with my jellyfish. And Captain America's like, I will throw my shield at you. And then, you know, you, you knock them together. And, and, and so you have this sort of play where, where the responsibility for the details of the story, and this is the fun part, start to, uh, you know, be the responsibility of the player itself. And this is, this is one of my, my favorite things about things like, like uh, these long-term uh, world-building games, like, like even Smurfs or Happy Street, where I, if you ever saw my, my Smurfs village, I have a Texas Chainsaw Massacre version, like, section of my Smurfs village, because I figured out how to make that look like that. Um, because I thought that was a really interesting thing to do with Smurfs. And so, I, I, lo I, I love it when you start, when, when these things start to happen. So, so now, this is the new age. And this is where the concept of meaning that I started, uh, that I mentioned at the beginning, start to come into play, because, because un unlike linear media, and particularly novels, um, and, uh, well, linear media, 
uh, like I was saying, the, the player through interaction starts to have more responsibility for what that story actually is. And that used to be a huge challenge and a huge, you know, you don't want, you don't want, you don't want other people messing with your story. Well, now that's actually kind of an exciting place to be is, ooh, what if I gave them five elements and what kind of stories would these people tell? And there's a lot of great work actually in Columbia and then and along those lines going on. Um, so, so, so when storytelling itself is the mechanic, then you start to go into other places versus storytelling as a context for your game, where storytelling is the mechanic, things start to change. Because, because to me, you know, a simple, a simple uh, you know, definition of a game is a game is designed to keep you from moving forward. And that's where, that's where the mechanics come in that you have to overcome challenges to keep moving forward. In linear media, like story is meant to propel you forward, which is sort of antithetical to, to game design. But what's great is when you, you again, when you analyze it, what they did with, um, with uh, uh, Heavy Rain uh, and, and a bit with Walking Dead, is, is what they realized is, okay, so we're not going to give you a boss battle at the end of every chapter because that's not what you do. The, the, the last sentence of every chapter is meant to make you go read the next chapter, not stop you from reading the next chapter. They did this thing where they started saying, well, it really, story is about choices. Well, we're going to alter the story by figuring out what choices the character, or the, the player makes, accumulating them, and then you know, having them affect something later in the story, and then the story starts to bend and weave. And it's not, it's not as simplistic, and that's the awesome thing, it's not as simplistic as like a choose your own adventure or even Zork, where you dead end if you made the wrong choice. It's not about, you don't make wrong choices so much as you make choices, and then you see what the consequences of those choices are. And in that way, you're never stopped the way you are in a traditional game. You're more prepared, propelled forward to see what the consequences of those choices actually are. Um, um, uh, Walking Dead is starting to is starting to um, uh, you know popularize it a little bit more. It's it's still derived from the the, the um, point and click adventures, but I think they finally found a, a decent amount of sophistication in, in how the stories work. And what I find interesting in and in the difference between Heavy Rain and, and Walking Dead is the story doesn't really change all that much from choice to choice to choice to chapter to chapter. What's awesome about it is what I think is more interesting to a certain set, uh, like more traditional like TV viewing audience, which is the tone of the experience changes. Because the whole thing is about you know, personal relationships and that's why Walking Dead, for, for being zombies, is, is, has such a wide audience, is popular among uh, you know, women in particular, because it's not just about brain eating, it's about, you know, that's always in the background, but it's about how does society, how do, how do people's relationships, you know, work? How, I said that wrong. How, how does all of this work in the backdrop of brain eating? Um, and, and so, what I think is interesting is you, you make choices in tone where, where as you go on, the same things will happen, but if you said, like I've played, I've got like three threads going through this game, and they're all ex almost exactly the same story with a character or two that swap out based on what you do. But other than that, what's cool is I have a family, in one of them I have a family that loves me, and the other one I'm playing the jerk, and everybody hates me. And just even that tonal difference is an interesting, you know, expression because, because like in, 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 in TV, what they do is... Um, Scene, they'll always go for an emotional impact, even if the plot part of it doesn't quite make sense. Because the audiences are going to be more engaged with the emotions of the characters than the care. And this is mostly in TV, not so much in, in movies where you can craft it, you know, a single thing. Um, and so that, that's why I think this is interesting, because it takes that notion of the emotional impact being so important and more than the plot itself or the plot mechanic. And then there's and then there's this is I, I think of I think of Minecraft as as a as a way of storytelling because it's all of it's like Lego it's it's all about 
what's in your head, what can I create, and then what, you know, even if it's not a full-fledged story, it's still you're telling, you're expressing yourself, you're telling a story by the things that you built. And um, I guess uh, whatchamacallit is, in a, in a limited sense, uh, Disney Infinity's kind of doing this with their with a toy box mode. And I think even, and, I, and personally I think part of the long-term engagement in some of these other games that have been out for a while, like I said with Smurfs, is it's not just about personalization, okay, you know, all my Smurfs have, you know, you know magic hats on. It's what does that mean to me that I've done that? Um, why, you know, why do I think it's funny that I have a Texas Chainsaw Massacre section of my, of my street, or I just created last week uh, a, a beauty school in Smurfs, because I thought it was necessary. Um, but, you know, it's my way of, uh, it's more than just me playing a game or even just tapping it and wasting time. I'm, I'm telling stories, and I think, I think what's great is, is these, these, um, the, the new devices in particular be, are going to are, are going to make things like that explode because they're with you. They're part of your lives. Aha. They're with you. They're part of your lives, and, and they're always a, a source of a source of expression. Okay, so this is sort of a recap um, of uh, that. You know, look, games and story are not mutually exclusive, and when and when they're done right, the, the you know the right proportions. You know, it's like any recipe. We shouldn't be scared of it, and and that, and that we can't avoid it because again, we're not we're not doing pong all the time, and and the new the new systems in particular are not a, are not just about um, you know they're not just about a singular audience. Ooh, I'm in a cave. <laughs> um, there there there's it just gives you a broader palette to work from and a broader audience to address with your content. And, and as an example, different forms of writing itself are not, it's, there's no competition here. You know, people, you know there's not, it's not like West Side Story between you know, novelists and people who write haiku. You know, they, don't, they don't war in the streets because they write different things. There's room for all of this. It's a matter of deciding what you want to do and expressing it the way it needs to be expressed. And, and I think because there's a, 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 the, the, the audience for games. Um, I, I keep doing that because I think there, I think sometimes the word games gets in the way of what um, the future is going to bring in terms of, of how, it, how people use interactivity in terms of entertainment experiences. So that's why I keep doing that. I apologize. Uh, but but this, is, this is an example of that is once, once you integrate it into your tool set and your, your, your skill set for, for creating interactive experiences, um, you're both going to address new audiences that have just come online, and then you're going to realize that you can address audiences that haven't come online yet, and you're going to be able to bring new people into the fold. Um, and then this is and this is where you know it's use the story tools to even create new experiences. Like I'm a huge advocate that one day someone's going to want to start doing documentaries as interactive experiences and not movies, because I think learning and engaging with a, a, a topic is going to be more effective when you actually have to touch it and learn and, and interact with it versus sit and watch something that you probably agree with anyway. I think it'll reach more audiences and teach more audiences when you do stuff like that. And, that, and that's why, and this is also my finger waggling, that is that there's going to be other expressions of interactivity that start to get outside the game, the, the game stigma, um, educational, um, you know, serious games, I love serious games. All this, there's, there's a lot of things that you can do. And then this, this feeds back to interactivity as communication and not just a technical skill. Um, just because you t can type doesn't mean you can write. Cameras don't make movies. The people who have ideas use them as ways to express ideas. And I believe the same thing is going to be more and more and more true, and already is, but more and more true about the games business, where it started to, treat, to be treated as a, a set of tools for communication um, uh, for, and versus just a means to make games. Because then you're going to be able to start thinking of, if you're communicating, then you have to have a meaning for what you're communicating. And, and, and that's going to that's gonna alter a segment of the business and bring new audiences that are going to have different experiences. And that's not me. 
<laughs> you might think it is, but it's not. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, do we have time for questions? One question. Yeah, okay. One question. Better be good. Okay. All right. You're, sorry, he went in first. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, can you give us some alternatives for uh, goals in a, in a video game other than, like, go rescue someone? Yes. Like, well, right. Um, there's there's lots of goals. Like in a like in a casual game, even like uh, say you were going to do something like Smurfs, but it was going to be a little bit more structured from a story standpoint. Um, you know, one of your goals could be not just to build a city, but there's there's the politics of the city. There's like a city council. There could be there 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 could be a lot of Lot of, basically, a lot of goals that are organic to a situation like that, for example, in a casual game, like in a building game, that are not just build, but build for a purpose, and to attract certain things that that cause other uh, other events to uh, occur. And it's it's a little. I know I just gave you sort of a fuzzy answer because um, I went straight for my Smurfs. Damn it. Um, and I'm also reading. I'm also reading the new uh, J.K. Rowling book, um, the one outside of uh, called Casual Vacancy, and it's all about this small town. And 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 what I think is interesting about the book is she's done this epic, epic, you know, Harry Potter, and now I think she's trying to write an important book about a small town with small town, you know, you know, goals. The thing I think is interesting is because the thing that makes Harry Potter work is that that characters are not epic, like everybody is real, and then they're in this fantasy thing. And I think she actually overshoots the runway in this case because I think she thinks she's making a personal story, you know, a small story with these small goals. But if Harry Potter didn't have that same sort of essential, you know, you know smallness of characters so that you could identify with, it wouldn't have worked. So, so this is all to say that, that uh, like last year I did a talk on realification. It was about looking at real life for inspiration for game design particularly. Um, and I think you'll find that if you kind of click out of game tropes and, and game cliches and go back into the things that inspire people for other media like, you know, a small town where someone dies or, or you know, Monster in the Woods, or you know, from horror movies, or whatever. I think you'll find that there are a hell of a lot of goals that you can actually come up with that will be compelling. Because, is if, especially if your their whole context, the setting, the characters are all really well defined, all that's going to drive people forward to even a goal of setting up a, a you know a city council. So that's I hope that helps. Okay. Uh, you sir. I just think I think all that stuff has to just be better planned from the get go and and, and, and and planned as an experience. I mean, a very good example is I think Uncharted because the whole thing is the story and so you never want to skip. You're also never sure whether you're not out of gameplay or not in that in that game. And so the, the, your, your, your biggest problem with games of that sort and where cinematics are important is when they're jarringly different and they stop the flow of the experience because they're either badly written or they're in a different style or um, the, other, the other issue you have is, I think, it, again, I think all of this is getting better and it's gotten way better, is <clears throat> it used to be that you had no, you know, they, they weren't shot, they weren't staged cinematically. Um, and so you just have, you know, you have your game, which has a certain perspective, and then you have, I need to go to the other side of the river. And, and they have all this weird animation. And, they're, and part of the reason is, like in a movie, everything's sort of integrated into one shot. So you've got a character story, you know, then the actor, yeah, okay. And then, and then everybody died, thank you. <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry I have to go, that was very sad, but, but I'll, I'll talk to you afterwards. But thank you very much, everyone, I really appreciate it.
Thank you, David.